A lot of times, uh, mm -hmm. Plato is cited as the source of a lot of the ideas that uh, Christianity adopted, and some people claim that they copped them from Plato. But one of the things that Plato pointed out was that he didn't believe, he said that no God associates with men. And so the whole idea of the incarnation would run totally against th that period of time's belief system, right? So, I mean, in a sense, it, yeah. it's the understanding of how well, radical mm -hmm. the concept of the incarnation actually is, right? Yeah, well, there's actually two kinds of uh, uh, concepts going on in that early period. You have the pre-Platonic period, where you really do have gods, like we're talking about mythical gods here, consorting with men and actually having relations with women who are giving <clears throat> rise to godmen like Hercules kind of a thing. Yeah, like now, Zeus Plato just found that. Characters, right? Yeah, right. So Zeus is having yeah relations with this woman, give rise to, to Hercules and so forth. And, and, of course, Plato looks at this and goes, God is like one unrestricted being who is so powerful mentally, intelligently, intelligibly, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, in terms of his goodness, in terms of his beauty, there's no way, you know, <coughs> human beings can know him by participation or the creation, you know, participates in him, but like God, as it were, you know, deigning to become a man in that sense, Plato would just write it off. Now, Christians, of course, right, uh, would say, okay, look, um, you know, uh, the idea of, uh, we, didn't, we don't say God becomes man, right? We say the Son of God, uh, you know, the, the, the second person mm -hmm. of the Trinity becomes man, uh, but of course, uh, unites divine nature uh, to his human nature so he can become mediator for the whole world, right? Uh, he does that, but of course he does it in a very non-Platonic way. He doesn't do it anything like what Plato would conceive of. He doesn't do it anything like the pre-Platonic you know, uh, myths would conceive of it. You know, what the Christians are doing is trying to articulate a revelation that, are, uh, that began with Jesus. And frankly, when the early Christological hymns were written, you know, for all intents and purposes, right, the early Christological hymns may have been re uh, reliant upon, you know, the Platonic configurations in wisdom literature, like Wisdom 722 and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, which comes from Holy Scripture. But it, certainly they did not borrow from Greek myths and things of that nature. They are wrestling with, you know, trying to conceive of what Jesus says of himself, mm -hmm. what they experienced in the resurrection, right? They don't have to get any ideas from early Platonism. They don't have to get any ideas from pre-Platonism. They've got all their ideas from Jesus. They experienced right. him risen in glory. They experienced the Holy Spirit coming into him that they called the power of God himself, the dunamis tooth that ooh. They experienced Jesus' own preaching about himself as being one with the Father. Father, you have graciously willed it so. What you have hidden from the learned and the clever, you have revealed to the merest of children. Everything has been given over me, over to me by my Father, and no one knows uh, the Son but the Father, and no one knows the Father but the Son, and anyone to whom the, fa the Son wishes to reveal him. Now, just in that one line in all three synoptic, uh, or in, uh, in the Matthew and, and Luke, and the Q Logion there in the two synoptic Gospels, what we get right away is that the, the Son knows the Father as the Father knows the Son. There are four Abba substitutes. In it. That has to come from, from Jesus himself. I mean, there's just no question in my mind that Jesus was telling the apostles that he had this uh, co-naturality, pre-existing co-naturality with the Father. He's and doing it in Jewish vocabulary. Later, they use wisdom vocabulary and Greek vocabulary to articulate well, it. 